one of the things that we really need to continue to work with, and this fits in with the whole idea of spiritual aspects of trauma, is groundedness. And one of the problems with some traditions is they really don't work, I believe, adequately with grounding. You know, there's a lot of attention now with the use of psychedelics. And being a product of the 1960s, that's something I know a little bit about. And it's really essential that people are helped to ground this part of that experience and as part of all transformative experiences. Because if we don't ground it, <laughs> we don't have it. it. Grounding it really means embodying it, being in the body. I mean, of course, often we can just start with feeling our feet on the ground and noticing really how our feet contact. Now, uh, I think it's usually um, best or it's more effective to work standing up, but to just change the weight very slightly from one foot to another. So you're delicately, delicately swaying. So again, imagining that I'm standing. So I put my weight a little bit more on my left foot and I feel my foot opening into the ground like the feet of a frog. Then I sit very, very slightly over my right foot and feel my right foot opening, opening to the ground. But every part of the body, of the body when it's awakened, is that grounding, is also the container for these powerful sensations and feelings. You know, there's a Sufi saying, the body is the shore on the ocean of being. I think that really captures it wonderfully, really captures it wonderfully. Um, because our body is what contains these sensations, these feelings. And one of the ways that we can help awaken our bodies is by gently squeezing our muscles, different muscles and different parts of our body as really as an awakening of kind of like pumping life into our body. Just, and this is gent firm, but gentle, really feeling, feeling, sometimes tapping different parts of the body can be helpful to awaken the body, to use the body as a ground and to use our feet especially as connecting to, literally to the ground. There are some images that have been particularly for me relevant in appreciating what happens in trauma and, and in healing of trauma. In ancient Japan, uh, the sharing of tea was a very important part of the family and of the community. If a guest came over, they would pour tea into the cup and would share the tea. And I mean, they do this even till today. Now, of course, not as regularly. Um, and in ancient Japan, when the uh, teacup would crack, there would be a crack and they would fill it, not with the ceramic, not with clay, but with gold. And I think that symbolizes that when something, somebody has suffered damage, trauma, and has a history, when that's healed, they're more beautiful than before. When I started working with people in the 60s and 70s, I sometimes asked them a question. Um, if you could either have what you have here after they've really worked through and, and healed the trauma, if you would be here, have this or have not had the trauma at all, almost everybody said, I would have much rather had the trauma and be where I am right now. I think that's about this creating this inner beauty and self um, self compassion and compassion for others, empathy for others. I think that's really essential, and that's what's missing so much 
in our everyday lives, especially these last couple of years with COVID where people are really disconnected from each other. It's really harmful. Trauma is not what happens to us or not just what happens to us, but what we hold inside in the absence of an empathetic witness. And that is critical. And in order to be an empathetic witness, we as therapists have to be present. We have to get there. We have to be there with ourselves for the other person. You know, um, uh, some 20, 15 years ago, um, I was crossing the road and I was hit by a teenage driver at about 25 miles an hour. I was flown into the windshield and then flown back up into the air and onto the, onto the road. And um, I literally was out of my body. It was as though, no, no, it wasn't as though, it was being above my body, looking down and seeing my twisted limp body and a crowd starting to come towards me like cadaverous ravens. And um, thankfully, this woman came by because, I mean, you know, I, I know about trauma first aid. If, I, if this happens to somebody else, I know exactly what to do, what not to do and what to do. Anyhow, this woman came by and she said, uh, yeah, I'm a doctor. Uh, actually, I'm a pediatrician. I remember thinking that's the kind of specialty I need right now. And she said, is there anything I can do for you? And I said, yes, please just stay with me. And she sat down and she took her hand in mine. I mean, <laughs> my hand in hers. <laughs> and just doing that allowed me to come into my body so I could reset my nervous system by being aware of my bodily experience. Because be, before that, uh, a, an off-duty paramedic came and he took my pulse, it was about 160, which is what you would expect. And anyhow, when the ambulance came and I was in the ambulance, they were taking my pulse and blood pressure. I asked them what the reading was and the, the woman, the paramedic said, um, I can't tell you that, I can only tell that to a doctor. I said, well, actually I am a doctor. Half truth, part truth at least. Um, I didn't say what kind of doctor. And she said, but let me try again. And there must be something wrong with the apparatus because it shows that your pulse rate is 74 and your blood pressure is 120 over 70. And she said, people are never like that after an accident. And I said, well, would you like me to explain? Because I never miss a, uh, an opportunity to proselytize. So I explained what I did in my body that helped bring me back into my body and move through the states of fear, terror, and, um, and come back to myself. And to regulate my internal milieu, my homeostasis, to come back into equilibrium. And again, that's one of the keys in helping traumatized people is giving them the tools, and I'll give you a couple of exercises, giving them the tools so that they can settle their internal state. So you do that with them because we need initially to at least have somebody to help co-regulate our internal experience, that empathetic witness, that present witness that knows how to hold that space. And that's absolutely, absolutely essential. But the work is done with the client internally in processing, the, processing their bodily sensations. When a person is exposed to overwhelming stress, threat, or injury, they develop a procedural memory, procedural memory or body memory. And memory, traumatic memory, is something that is so poorly understood, not just by lay people, but by many, many therapists at all, because the traumatic memories, they're not conscious memories. 
their memories of what the body did to, to protect itself from threat and injury. And again, it keeps replaying as a bodily memory, robbing us of the ability to be in the present. So anyhow, trauma occurs when these implicit procedures, these implicit body memories are not neutralized. The failure to restore homeostasis is at the basis for many of the maladaptive and debilitating symptoms of trauma. In summary, somatic experience offers a framework to assess where the person is stuck in the physiological trauma response. Are they stuck in fight? Are they stuck in flight, in fleeing? Are they stuck in freeze? Or are they stuck in collapse? Or different elements of all three or four of these. 